to really regal things and oh, yeah. uh, other like emperor status items. For instance, one of the biggest um, items that you'll see is his very special crown, which is called Mian. Okay. It has 12 beads on it, and so that is the that is a very important number to emperors. It is basically representative of the 12 symbols of the emperor, so that can range from like dragons and phoenixes to other smaller natural things. And of course, you've got to check out this humongous, beautiful <laughs> so jade back piece. Which that is so amazing. So he's got the kind of the floating walk style, which we've used in a few gods like Hera and Thoth. Uh, yeah. It felt very fitting to him. Uh, we didn't really want him running. It's not very emperor-like. Uh, yeah. The beads also on his crown are symbolic and keeping them still yeah. is to show the calm and grace of an emperor, whereas if he were to be hastily moving or clumsily moving, they would be shaking all over the place. Yeah. But they stay nice and gentle and smooth. And he moves that way as well. Um, very fire. magical and um, very uplifting with his abilities, uh, inspiring to his teammates, and kind of a mage kit that rewards you for patience a little bit to yes, kind of sure. um, really dial into the meditation themes of his lore. Um, any more general things to add before we go ahead and just do the full, the full show? <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, just be ready for some references to a lot of the small things uh, within his lore, like again, the phoenix and the dragons. You'll be seeing some of them oh, soon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, then let's see the kit. Let's do it. Run the kit. God. It's all coming together. Fighting so alongside <laughs> with the dragon. Yeah. So many things happen. Yeah, right? The dragon's presence is incredible. All right, so many things happen there. Uh, let's start to break it down, just starting, starting with the basic attack. Let's start right at the beginning. Yeah, so the basic attacks are pretty normal. He's actually manifesting his Dao into these like fiery, uh, magical projectiles that he's shooting out. So there is not a whole lot going on with those, but it's especially special until we start getting into the passive, and that's where things get interesting. Well, then let's get into the passive. Let's not keep him waiting. All right, so as you can see there, right above his character portrait, he does have this passive meter, and so you can see that it's lighting up a little bit. We'll get into the specifics of what it does, but you can see that jade segment popped off on the side there. That's yeah. how you know your passive is ready to go. So Yu Huang's passive is called Master of the Dao, and so how that works is you've got 12 segments in this passive meter. Yeah. Once you hit six segments, which you can gain and lose Dao by doing various things, your abilities and basic attacks become attuned. He becomes attuned to the Dao. Uh, so there is a lot of different effects that you'll see throughout the kit that change whether or not you are uh, attuned. Uh, and the first one of those effects has to do with his basic attacks. So if you are ever over six Dao, your basic attacks will chain once to the nearest enemy and they do reduce damage to that second That's enemy. So awesome. But it's pretty good for lane clear, pretty yeah. good for jungle clear. It's just a nice little spicy thing to add to his basic attacks, and this happens whenever you're over six Dao, uh, and it does not cost any Dao to use these auto attacks. It's awesome that it works on, on both uh, like enemy players, but also on the jungle camps, on the lane minions. That, that's awesome. Yeah, right, so, so to go into a little bit more how you yeah. actually gain this Dao, Do there it. are two ways to gain it through your passive and then a couple of other ways uh, throughout his kit. But the first way is you just get one every 15 seconds. So every 15 seconds, you will see that he will get one more Dao. The second way is if you take a look at the passive meter, there's a nice big jade emblem in the middle. You can see it's glowing right now. Yeah. But if you hit someone or you are hit, it goes off. You only get one Dao, though, if you hit someone from out of uh, combat. So if, you, if you're not fighting anyone for three seconds, you haven't hit or been hit within three seconds, you will get one more Dao. Okay, cool, cool. So it's kind of a resource management, kind of something you have to, you have to watch out for and pay attention to. And I'm sure that'll affect other abilities. So let's get right into them with uh, ability one, Flames of the Phoenix. Yeah, so this is a very interesting take on a poke tool. There's, this is a brand new shape. Never seen the shape before. Ooh. It's got an X and a circle. So you can see here with this targeter, the first thing that's going to happen is where all those arrows are on that X, yeah. you're going to have cinders spawn there. And those are going to be pretty nice pillars of points. They're going to all collide together in the center. And when that happens, there's a big explosion and then a field of fire right in that center circle area. And the symbol of the phoenix. And the phoenix, I was about to say, pops up right in the center. Yeah, so that actually lets you know when the ability is attuned. So if you were really? to ever get above six Dao, when you fire it, an enemy will know that it has been attuned when you see that phoenix. So normally, no phoenix attuned, there is a phoenix in there. Got and it. to kind of talk a little bit more about how the damage is broken down on this one, if you take, uh, if you get hit by the projectile of the cinders coming to the center, that's a little bit of damage. There's an explosion coming from the, uh, when all of them collide. 
And then there's a burn coming from that field of flames. And if you're attuned, you'll also have your magical protections reduced. Yes, so if you step into that explosion, uh, the explosion damage is what is actually doing the protection reduction. If you are just in the burn and you don't get hit by that initial explosion, your protections are just the same. Got it, yeah, and it, it, it consumes your uh, your Dao to hit them with. That's awesome. Yes, so every ability that does take Dao takes six Dao. So you'll always know that you can do at least two abilities if yeah. you're at full. Uh, there are, again, still more ways to get back Dao. So if you happen to be weaving in basic attacks, staying in and out of combat, uh, and doing those kind of actions, you can get to, you know, three abilities enhanced during a fight. It just really depends on the player that's going to be doing it and how yeah. well they've mastered attuning to the Dao. <laughs> I, I love when the, the theme of the actual god plays in the kit so much, and that'll be really cool to see both in those those really heated team fights where you're just gonna have to choose what two abilities do I want to use my Dao on, but uh, also and, and you know the poke game because you can really be concise about when you throw your auto attacks and you use that Dao to you know play into maybe poking your your opponent out of lane. That, that's really cool. If you pace yourself, take your time, reset, you know, build that Dao back up before the next fight, you're gonna be a lot more effective than if you just come in. Here. Yeah. So really, I mean, again, have to exercise that patience, that emperor-like patience. Well, ability two is going to make you also want to be patient <laughs> if you're going to want to get its full effects. Well, let's get into ability two, Dao Cultivation. So in this one, this is really the biggest point where you can gain the most Dao at once. Uh, so Dao Cultivation is basically a charging ability, and the longer that you stay in it, the more Dao that you get up to a cap. So you can see there, the target is grayed out, and once it gets colored in, that's when you've gotten your first Dao. But there's a lot of nice visual and audio sound effects that are going to be coming in to let you know when you've gained your cap, a sixth Dao per ability cast. You can see actually in his passive meter that uh, the slots start filling up red. Yeah. So that starts showing you how much Dao you will gain when you fire it. You cannot get any Dao unless you fire it. Uh, so for instance, if you were to get canceled out of it, you wouldn't lose the cooldown, you yeah. wouldn't lose the mana, you would just need to charge up again to get the full amount of Dao. But you can fire it early, you don't have to sit there and wait for the Dao to gain uh, all the way up to 6. You can fire it early. There is a slight bit of reduced damage if you fire it too early though, so you want to make sure you're holding on to it for just the right amount of time before sending it off. Yeah. If you fire it before 1 second, you're going to get the reduction. If you wait the full 3 seconds, that's when you get all the Dao. Or you can just keep it charged and just kind of hold it for the right time. Exactly. And then this ability is going to do damage in the center um, narrow projectile area. Then the projectile itself, its its wake of energy explodes out, causing a, a second effect of damage in a wider area and rooting the gods in the area. So this is also what his, his primary CC is. Yes, he's got a slow on the center rectangle and on the outside is a root. So really the slow is just there to help you guarantee the root. If you hit that really thin skill shot, you will almost certainly guarantee the root unless they're on the very edge of the outer rectangle. Yeah. And again, I, I love Jade as as a look, as an, it's just so pleasing to me personally, and the amount of it that's worked into these abilities, I mean, the, the green in that like center projectile before it erupts is just so pleasing to look at. That is such a, an aesthetic ability. Like, all, all utility and amazing usage aside, I just, looking at it, somebody will hit me and they'll be like, ow, oh, that hurt, but it was also really nice, I don't know. <laughs> so. Um, the next ability, which we also we, we kind of uh, foreshadow as a unique abil a movement ability, is, yeah. is very different. It has a very different feel, very different look. It handles very differently than pretty much anything we've done in Smite before. Yeah, and it's definitely one that stands out from the others. That's ability three, Celestial Flight. So uh, let's see some Celestial Flight. Yeah, so in this ability, Yu Huang's actually going to be calling down, uh, I guess calling up the Pearl Dragon from beneath him. <laughs> yeah. And uh, this, this use of the Pearl Dragon is actually really interesting as it ties into its lore because there's a very popular story about the four dragons of uh, the rivers in Chinese mythos and how they came to be. So this is like that origin story kind of mixed in here. So the Pearl Dragon was really the first dragon to call upon the emperor when the people were thirsty in need of water. There was a big drought. Uh, and so the Pearl Dragon went to the Jade Emperor and said, hey, you know, we, we need water for the people. And the Jade Emperor said, okay, well, I can get to that soon. I have a lot of other Imperial duties that I have to get to. Um, but eventually the dragons just went and did themselves and Yu Huang was not too pleased with them going over his Imperial authority. So to punish them, he basically changed the four dragons into the four major Chinese rivers. Huh. That's really cool. Yeah, well, so the, the one that we have featured in the game is the Pearl Dragon of the Pearl River. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, look at that. I mean, the Pearl Dragon coming out of the ground, lifting him straight on up and coming on down as well. So what you're seeing here is the attuned effect of this ability, where the Pearl Dragon actually comes back down with you and 
kind of swoops around there on the ground and knocks people away. What this is is actually a slow moving self banish and untargetability. So it's kind of like a juke more than a leap. You get a, you get a relatively long window of untargetability and um, CC immunity, but you don't really gain that much extra distance or speed. Yeah. Um, you cannot use this to go over walls either, uh, but you can go, get, use it to escape player made walls. Yes. Um, and then upon landing, he's going to deal bonus damage. Um, just in uh, just, just damage in that circle, and with the attuned effect, you're going to get damage and a knock. Up. You can see that knock up right Ooh, there. Yeah. And another small piece of control that's actually super cool about this ability is if you're up in the air, you're actually able to refire it by pressing the button again or by left clicking to go down faster. So you have complete control of how much time you spend in the air, whether that's the max amount, whether that's the minimum amount, or somewhere in between. Whenever you need to get back down, you're going to be able to. Yeah, that's awesome for, for, for both control and, you know, if you're using this offensively or defensively, right? Because if you're trying to, you know, use some Dao, get that knock up, then you can really just rain down on your enemies. But if you're like, all right, I got to get out of here. Odin just put up a wall. Uh, you can just kind of glide right over and enjoy enjoy the, the max duration of that community. That's really, really cool to see. And just, again, very aesthetically pleasing. That dragon animation is so clean and such a powerful piece of imagery that, I don't know, it's just, like you said, a very unique ability. Yeah, definitely a little bit less of a movement ability and more of a, an outplay yeah. safety ability like you'd see out of like Changa to or Robin to. It's, it's definitely going to be used in that way. Yeah, and I, I'm excited to see how it's used because, uh, again, just such a, a powerful ability even just to look at. So that moves us, of course, to uh, the ult, which I'm super excited about uh, us getting a closer look at. This ult is called Dueling Dragons. And that they do. When you use this ultimate ability, Yu Huang summons the Pearl Dragon once more, but he also creates a dragon out of his own Dao. So you'll see here how there's two different dragons showing up. The one that's next to him is made out of this beautiful jade energy. It's shining, it's sparkling, it's gorgeous. The art team absolutely knocked it out of the park with this thing. I am so impressed with how that visually works. But yeah, you've got your two dragon buddies, and <laughs> you basically have a hinged line targeter. So how this works is the faraway dragon from you, the pearl dragon, doesn't actually move, but what you can do is you can aim the line in different directions, and, and yeah, just, I mean, look at that. That's amazing. That's so sick. He's scary, but he's the, also cool. The, like, power <laughs> stance. Yeah, right? The sparkling effect is incredible, too. Just that, I mean, that, that shimmering. The profile of the dragons, too, like that is just awesome. And you can see here they're going to crash together, and then a big explosion. Oh, that's cool. They kind of like fade as they finish their fight. That's awesome. Oh, I love that. Yeah, so if you're hit with this ability on either line, uh, you will get pushed to the center, wherever that center may be. So you'll see there, that circle is where they'll end up. Uh, yeah. And that circle's not always there. So if you are spread apart or you pull the lines too far apart, they do have a max distance that each of them go, but you start pretty well within it. So if you want that extra explosion damage, you can have it, but you're not stuck to that uh, yeah like straight line that you have. You can always turn around, move around, do whatever you need to do, and make one really long line of push if you absolutely <laughs> wanted to. That's really awesome. So you can push people toward him and push away with away from him with this. And you know, we've always wanted to experiment with an ability that spawns something further away that comes back to you. Yeah. We've never really done that before, so here you can get this um, ultimate, you get a lot of either long range poke or potentially even some control. You could you know, kind of pluck someone out of yeah. the opposing lineup if you hit it well. You can also use it to peel for yourself. So if someone's right up on right up on your face and you need to get some space, you can use them to push them away. Um, they're gonna take that extra explode damage as well. Um, and it's like, can also kind of function as just a, a range skill shot where you have some very interesting angles on it that you don't normally get yeah. on a mage. 